All right, I'm recording. Hey gang, Andy here, coming at you, book with my May 2016 update video, part two. So yeah, in this update video, I'm just gonna be, well, updating you guys on stuff that I didn't uh, quite get to in the uh, the first update video, and you know, to cover changes and stuff like that. So update. <laughs> so yeah, um, the other day I posted a. Uh, new little thing on my blog. That's right, I do have a blog. It's uh, theandysan.com. So um, it's, it originally started off as just, you know, because before this whole YouTube thing, uh, I was a blogger. So that's kind of where I got my start on uh, doing stuff online. And uh, once YouTube came around, then I progressed to that platform. But we'll get to that in a minute. So uh, I got the blog post up here, so I'm just going to be kind of leafing through and uh, giving you guys a general gist of what's going to be going on uh, for a while. So, yeah. Um, the main thing is I'm going to be looking into uh, revamping my blog. Uh, it's just kind of been this ongoing thing. And, you know, I've had, you know, several projects come and go that have kind of interfered with that. But uh, I do want to get back into... Uh, trying to fix up my blog a little bit, maybe um, change the layout or something like that. Although, I do like the layout. It's nice, simple, and effective. But uh, I'm not sure if it still works in today's blogging world. I mean, that might have been cool back in 2006. Not sure if it flies now in 2016. But uh, I could be wrong. You know, maybe simple is best. But uh, let me know what you guys think in the uh, comments below in the boobity boops. So, I may be completely off base here. I don't know. But uh, in any event, um, what I'm going to be doing is taking a short little break from making new videos. Um, this is just because uh, uh, lately, just whenever I sit down to make one of them, like this one right here. Um, <laughs> this is actually like my third take. But uh, anyway, uh, whenever I sit down to make videos, I'm not entirely happy with them. Um, so I decided to uh, just take a little break, get uh, a chance to kind of uh, recoup, get back to basics as far as that goes, and you know come back to YouTube fresh and stuff like that. But that's not to say I'm not going to be making any new videos. It's just I'm not going to be making um, new videos on a uh, consistent basis for a while. Uh, so uh, that's to... You know, there's several reasons behind that, but we'll get into that. I'm getting ahead of myself here. So, um, some changes to the video schedule. So, in addition to um, kind of slowing down a little bit with the uh, the new stuff, um, one of the main things I'm going to be uh, putting on hiatus is Andy Cade. So, um, I do like playing video games. And uh, I do like how some of the Andy Cade episodes have turned out. And you guys seem to like them too. But the thing is, it is a very time consuming uh, process to make them because I gotta, it's not really like it's hard. It just takes a lot of time because a lot of those episodes are like, you know, 15, 20 plus minutes long. And that's just what I put up on YouTube. You know, there's also the process of, you know, especially now because I'm a lot more um, picky about what I put up in Andy Kate episodes. It used to be just kind of you know, put whatever on there, and that's it. You know, just basically have it like a raw file, and, you know, just kind of deal with that. But uh, lately I've been kind of getting a bit more picky about what I put up there and just try to trim a lot of the, you know, slow parts out. But, uh, again, that takes more time to, you know, go through the whole thing and just kind of get rid of all the slow parts and then put in new edits and all that kind of stuff and again it's not hard it's just time consuming so that's the main point I want to get across here you know oh it's too hard for him to play video games and put online what's going on <laughs> no, that's not the case at all it's just uh, just a matter of time really and with uh, you know summer classes and I got uh, a new job finally so um, that's gonna be eating into more of my time uh, so it's just you know it doesn't really make sense for me to keep on doing Andy Cade at least on a consistent basis like this so I decided to put it on a hiatus for now 
I'm going to be finishing up my current game, Gogo Nippon, my first trip to Japan. And then once that's all done, once it's done with its little five episode run, then、uh, we'll just kind of put the whole Andy K thing on the shelf for a little bit and、uh, just kind of go from there. Now,、uh, does this mean that I'll never, ever, ever play video games and put them online again? You know, no. That's not really the case.、Um, I do want to have Andy K be kind of a,、uh, an occasional thing. Just, you know, like if, if a new game that comes out that is interesting and I think I'd be into, you know, I definitely do want to put that up on the channel. But it's not going to be、uh, as consistent of a thing as it was, you know, with five episodes a week and stuff like that. It's not, it's not really going to happen. Anymore. So it's just going to be kind of an every once in a while thing. But、uh, for now, I'm just going to kind of pump the brakes on it until、uh, I get my time situation under control. <laughs> so,、um, but what does this mean for content in general for the channel? So I'm still going to be doing the re uploads of old stuff. So there's still going to be、uh, new, quote unquote, <laughs> uh, releases on my channel. Um, just so that way there's you know, an influx of content and stuff like that. But、uh, I'm going to reduce those to、uh, just one episode a day, every day.、Um, I haven't quite figured out what time slot I want to put it in yet.、Um, I'm kind of aiming for like、uh, late morning, early afternoon Eastern Standard Time. So if I would, if I would like, give you guys an estimate, probably somewhere in between. Like 10 in the morning to around 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, somewhere about there.、Um, once I figure it out, I'll you know, let you guys know on Twitter. So if you aren't following me there, it's twitter.com slash theandysan. So easy to remember, right? <laughs> Consistency.、Um, but yeah, I'll just do one episode a day for those instead of you know, one a day and then two on the weekends. So that way, you know, you guys get. Something, but、uh, yeah, I'm just going to be slowing down on the new stuff for a little bit once I get my schedule under control and you know I'm doing good in classes and stuff like that. But、uh, the new videos, when they are to be made, will be released、uh, maybe like an hour or two before the re upload, and、uh, I'll be sure to announce it on Twitter、uh, a little bit before, like maybe the day before or something like that. Uh, when a new episode's coming out. So be sure to follow me again on Twitter. So, twitter.com slash the Andy Son. Follow me! <laughs> so, anyway, now let's get into、uh, the personal、uh, problems and stuff like that I've been having. So,、uh, one of the main reasons、um, I wanted to take a break on doing new stuff on YouTube, in addition to、uh, trying to、uh, get a good beat on my、uh, schedule with work involved. And summer classes and stuff like that. Is that, you know, quite honestly, I've just been, you know, too focused on growing the channel as opposed to just making good videos, or at least enjoyable videos. And because I've been so growth driven, it's really kind of taken the joy out of making videos for you guys. And、uh, that's just something that I'm totally against. And it, it just it took me a while to realize it. <laughs> Because you know, I was so stubborn and like, I wanted to have the channel do good. So I tried you know, looking, at some of the, looking at the analytics and seeing you know, what's trending on YouTube and you know, trying to fit in with the cool kids and do stuff like that. But you know, a lot of that stuff's just kind of been met with、uh, you know, modest success at best, you know, despite you know, the effort that I put into it. But you know, even. When it was successful, I just wasn't overall happy with it. And,、uh, you know, the whole, one of the main things that kind of leaked into my whole、uh, bad attitude was, you know, number one was financial problems, and that at the time I didn't have a job. So I was digging into my savings a bit more than I should have, and, you know, eventually it just kind of, well, ran out. So, Uh, <laughs> that also put a lot of stress on me. And, you know, grades and stuff like that. You know, there w a s times where, you know, I wouldn't have homework done, or, you know, even days where I wouldn't show, show up to certain classes. 
which is something I don't recommend. Um, because, but it wasn't because you know I was sad or anything like that. It was because I was, you know, busy hunting for jobs, and you know, all of it's done online. So, you know, I'm just sitting here on the computer. Okay, you know, going through Craigslist, going through like LinkedIn and all these other different job boards, Monster, Indeed, all that kind of stuff. Looking in the area, like, okay, you know, what jobs are available? And then just kind of looking through like a map of Kalamazoo Portage area. And seeing, like, okay, uh, what kind of minimum wage job could I get, you know, possibly? And just kind of put in my application here, 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 and uh, just kind of waiting. Because um, the thing is, like, with with how it is now, um, it used to be, you know, you'd put in your application either... It used to be, uh, you know, mainly paper-based, so, like, you go to the place ask for an application, get the application, bring it home, fill it out, and then bring it back. And, you know, you could possibly talk to a manager then, I don't know, depending on the company. Or you could just say, you know, hey, here's my application, you know, have a nice day, you know, put on the, the smile. <laughs> and uh, at least maybe try to get a little bit of face time with the manager. But if not, you know, at least you got it in. So, uh, and then, like, wait a week, start calling, seeing, like, hey, you guys, I'm just checking on my application, you know, I was wondering if you guys were still hiring, you know, I'm still available, you know, stuff like that. But worded a lot more businessy. so. Um, and then that was the basic way to do it. But now it's all done electronically. You know, you just send in your application, you do the little uh, assessment quiz, and, uh, you know, because I, I tried doing, you know, the old method of, you know, calling him back after a week of sending the thing in. And, uh, you know, most of the time, in fact, well, all the time that I've done that, um, the thing is uh, that particular store doesn't actually hire people, per se. It's all done through either an HR department that they have in store or that's just kind of, outside the store you know it's all done corporately you know all the applications and stuff go through the machine and they look you know for stores in the area of you know places that they need people and they look for like the best quote unquote candidate and then you know once they determine that you're the best then they send out a little thing to the store saying hey call this guy in for an interview you know see how he does and that's when you can get the determination for being hired. But as far as getting picked up for an interview, I should have clarified that. So you get hired by the store, but you get the interview through the HR department, computer, uh, corporate machine, basically. So and that was the thing that was kind of killing me because I couldn't get any FaceTime with the manager to the point where it'd be like, you know, eh, they're coming for an interview. So it was a lot, it was a lot less personal than... Uh, what I'm used to. So I just pretty much had to sit there and take it in the face, you know, just wait until people were hiring. And uh, obviously one of the big things was timing, you know, because I came here in the, in the, the winter slash spring semester. Um, the, uh, a lot of the stores, in fact, none of the stores around were hiring for anybody because you know, they had already got everybody locked in from the previous semester, so they didn't really need any new people. And plus, it was winter time, so, you know, they they weren't really hiring to begin with. But uh, I still kept in, kept plugging in my application to places. And, uh, yeah, it wasn't until, <laughs> ironically enough, it wasn't until the, uh, the, la the previous month, April, the last month of the semester uh, for spring, that I started getting callbacks and that was something else that kind of affected my grades because I got I got so many callbacks for interviews and stuff that it kind of affected my grades because like I'm worried like okay I hope I do good in this interview you know I hope it you know do good and you know there would be times where I'd have to either miss class or get out a little early in order to make the interview or to make it back home to change because I don't want anything like I don't want to accidentally sit in some, you know, sit in like a dirty seat and have like a stain on my butt or something like that. So I wanted to make sure, 
you know, my interview outfit was nice and clean and didn't have to worry about any of that stuff. So I, you know, go to school in normal clothes and then come back home, change, and then go to uh, wherever the interview was. So it was just a lot of, a lot of worry. And, you know, at, you know, on one hand, I was very excited that I was getting all these callbacks. I'm like, oh, this is awesome. But at the same time, I was like, where were you guys a couple months ago when I really needed you? <laughs> Not that I don't now, but, you know, hot dang. So, but eventually after all that, um, I uh, got hired at a McDonald's. I know, really exciting. But, uh, yeah, that was kind of uh, a humbling experience, you know, just because I, you know, my the one thing I was looking for uh, in the beginning when I was looking for jobs was as long as it wasn't fast food or food related, um, I'll do it. You know, because I was looking at, like, either retail, like, an office job, or, like, a paid internship, or work study, and uh, the whole work study thing, you know, all the programs were locked in for that particular semester, fiscal year, whatever you want to call it. So I couldn't get an in with any of those, even the VA work study, because they were all locked in for that time period. But uh, next, this coming uh, like fall semester, I might be able to. It's just a matter of uh, applying for them and making sure that they can uh, give me the hours and pay that I need to, you know, help keep the lights on during the month. Because uh, the whole thing, and yes, I do get BAH because I'm going through the post 9 11, but it only goes so far. And I still got to put gas in the car, still got to eat. And all this other stuff, so I've been living uh, very leanly, eating like, you know, ramen noodles and, you know, microwave burritos because you can get those pretty cheap and they're pretty filling. And, you know, I got, you know, huge bags of rice. So I've been, you know, and just drinking water, which, you know, is also good for you. You know, don't get me wrong. But, uh, yeah, I really haven't been leave living, you know, you know, luxuriously or anything like that. It's been very, very Spartan lifestyle. And another reason why I stay in the apartment so that way I don't end up, you know, spending more money. So, you know, that's one of the reasons why I haven't been doing too many videos outside is because I stay in the apartment so I don't spend money. Whether it's money and gas to drive around or, you know, maybe I go outside and I go to the convenience store, I'm like, hey, I want to pick something up, you know, <laughs> just because I'm in the area, you know, I want something to drink, you know, whatever, I'm just kind of tempted, so I figure it's just kind of best to, you know, keep the blinders on, because I really don't, I really, I literally can't afford to, to do stuff like that right now, but uh, now that I got hired at McDonald's, uh, once the paycheck starts coming in, then I can, you know, spend a bit, I uh, can kind of breathe a bit easier, and, you know, spend money on actual food, which is another thing I'm going to be getting into uh, once I can, you know, recalculate my budget based on what I make at McDonald's and stuff like that. So, but that's a video for another time. But in any event, uh, basically just to boil that whole rambly thing down, um, I just got very frustrated with not being able to get a job, having little to no money, uh, and having my grades suffer because I was so stressed out. And it just kind of bled into my whole attitude. And plus I was, I was and still am going through um, just the whole transition of not only getting out of the military, but coming back to America after being in Japan for two years. And then going back to college after being out of college for going on 10 years now. Actually it was 10 years uh, this month in May. May of 2006, or 2007, so actually that's nine years, never mind, so uh, nine years of being out of uh, college for the first time. So it's just a lot of changes happened in a very short amount of time, and, uh, you know, it's going to take me a little bit to kind of, you know, even out again, but uh, I, think I'm, I think I'm on track, and I'm kind of getting there, and uh, getting a job again will uh, really help out, you know, not only with 
helping me out with the money situation, but also giving me a little something extra to do and kind of give me, giving me a reason to get up in the morning besides school. So there you go. And uh, yeah, so this whole negative mentality and it kind of leaked over, you know, because I would watch a lot of these uh, really great up and coming YouTubers and uh, I remember following them when they only had maybe a couple hundred subs or even less than that. And you know, within a matter of months, they surpassed me in subs, you know, by a significant amount. And uh, yeah, I was, I was and am happy for them. But at that time, you know, I was also just really jealous because, you know, I was, ma you know, I thought I was making good videos, and I'm like. Why couldn't I get a little bit of those subs too? You know, like what's wrong with my videos? Like, is the lighting bad? The sound bad? You know, do I ramble and um and ah and you know too much? You know, what's wrong with my videos? And I, you know, took it really personally because I figured, you know, like there's something wrong with me. And, you know, I put a lot of my self worth into those videos and. Just, I guess, the not really those videos, but the analytics of those videos. I should uh, rephrase that. Uh, because even though the videos I think are good, but uh, they may only get like maybe a hundred or so views, you know, compared to some other ones that I thought were just kind of throwaway videos, but ended up getting like tens of thousands of views. Um, but the whole thing with YouTube is. Uh, it's just really a luck of the draw, and you can do a lot of things to um, even the odds in your favor. But uh, ultimately, YouTube is comes down to luck, really. And you know, like I said, you know, if you do a lot of good things, you know, make good good quality content on a consistent basis. But uh, that doesn't work for everybody. But ultimately, it's just a crapshoot. But anyway, this whole mentality of thinking that, you know, what's wrong with my videos, what's wrong with me, um, just really killed my creativity. And I could tell in some of those videos I was just really angry and wanted to, uh, the videos to do well. And it just, you know, leaked into the videos, leaked onto social media, you know, because I would post a lot of negative stuff. And, you know, some of my friends were getting kind of concerned, you know, like, what's going on with them up there? Uh, but, you know, I was talking with my mom on uh, Mother's Day, because um, we usually talk, like, you know, once a week, you know, usually on the weekends, and uh, both of us aren't working. <laughs> I can say that now, because I got a job. But, uh, yeah, we usually, like, talk once a week. And uh, we were talking on Mother's Day, and she just kind of, you know, gave me a little bit of advice, and uh, one of the main things that really stuck with me was, you know, living more in the present, because uh, I noticed that I focused too much on, you know, things I did before in the past, whether that was my life in the Navy, or my life in Japan, or when I was in college the first time, or when I was in high school, or something like that. I kind of looked at it a little bit, you know too much and then for the future you know I was focused too much on the future you know like okay you know this whole college thing it's I got about like three to four years and then after that I'm gonna be in Japan so this whole college thing doesn't mean anything and it just is just a bad mindset to be in so um, I'm gonna be focusing more on the present whether that's making this video right now or Having a drink of water or eating some microwave burritos. I don't know. Maybe going outside for a walk after this, probably. Uh, but any, in any event, I'm going to be focusing more on uh, just the present and being more in the present so that way I can enjoy what's going on right now and be more appreciative of what I have right now in this moment. And hopefully I can get back to a a proper mindset and one of the things that I feel is gonna help me with that is to even though I said you know be in the present and stuff like that uh, but I do want to get back to my roots uh, my blogging roots 
because uh, I did the whole blogging thing, you know, even before YouTube started up. Um, I originally started it back in 2005, but I've had uh, a website in, I started my own first website uh, back on GeoCities, <laughs> way back in the day. Uh, that started back in, I think, either 2003 or 2000, I think it was 2004, very early 2004, because um, it was the only free uh, website thing that you could get at the time. And I started it up originally to uh, have like a log of Yu-Gi-Oh cards and Yu-Gi-Oh card rulings, because basically my best friend and I were uh, doing this uh Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, trading card game tournament and uh, I just wanted to make like a quick little down and dirty site because the uh, the official site had flash and you know keep in mind this was like early 2000s so not everybody had awesome internet that they do today or internet on their phones that was a pretty new thing and even if they did it was hella expensive so not exactly something, you know, high school kids could have for the most part. So uh, I just made this little website just to kind of keep an inventory on uh, all the new cards and uh, certain rulings and stuff like that. So that way we could reference it faster than the official site. And it was all just kind of a, you know, cut and paste from uh, the official site as well as the Beckett Yu-Gi-Oh page, which... Um, in the early days, I don't know if they still do it anymore because I don't think Yu-Gi-Oh! is as popular now as it was back then. But uh, when it first came out, um, Beckett made uh, these little uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, I guess magazines with like really good art on the cover, and you know a lot of times you know it was like special like uh, reflective art and stuff like that. It was really cool. And uh, it had, like, um, it had, uh, the big thing was it had um, all the uh, card prices for that time and stuff like that. So, you know, we would obviously get, like, the newest issue of Beckett. So that way when um, we would go in to trade for cards, and, you know, somebody was like, I'll give you this for this. And we kind of look at the, uh, the market value for, you know, the cards in question. And we'd be like, really? You know, this card's like, you know, maybe $5 more, you know. <laughs> um, maybe throw in a little something extra, you know, maybe we can talk or something like that. And uh, it also had, like, I think deck strategies and covered, like, the um, like the American tournaments and the Japanese tournaments and stuff like that. So it was pretty cool. Uh, but I don't think they do it anymore because it's not as popular as it used to be. But uh, I digress. So anyway... Um, I originally started a website in 2004, then in 2005 I started blogging because uh, my best friend, same guy, who uh, I did the uh, card tournaments with, even though he was, more, he was more in charge of it than I was, but uh, I was a regular, we'll say, um, but he went off to college, and at the time I was going to tech school, so I was uh, just commuting from home, so it was basically like being in high school but really far away, and I only had to go like two to three times a week. But uh, he went off to a proper four-year university, and uh, he was out of town and stuff like that. And uh, I was just doing uh, some random Googling one day, and I found his blog on Zanga. <laughs> you guys remember that from back in the day. And I'm like, oh, this is really cool. And then I found out that some of his friends in college kind of got him started into it, and they all kind of did it too. And I'm just like, oh, this is really cool. So I figured I'd, you know, start up my own Zanga just to kind of keep in contact with him and, you know, see what his friends are up to as well. And then later they became my own friends, so I wasn't a total creepazoid. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I just, I really fell in love with the platform. And, uh, you know, it was a good way for me to keep in touch with my friends because keep in mind this was, you know, before Facebook or like in the early, early days of Facebook where... Uh, you had to have a, uh, a college email, and uh, I remember this because when Facebook, when I first heard about Facebook back in like 2005-ish, I think, um, I wanted to get on it, and I'm like, oh, this is really cool, dude, but uh, I was going to ITT Tech at the time, um, and 
Facebook wouldn't accept my ITG Tech email address as an official accredited college, which should have been a red flag right there, you know, looking back on it. But uh, in any event, I couldn't get a Facebook account until uh, about a year later when I transferred from ITG Tech to Urbana University in Urbana, Ohio. And then I was able to get, I was able to use my Urbana address to, uh, to sign up for Facebook. So that was the initial address I used to sign up for Facebook before it went public, I think like a year or two later. And I'm just like, fuck, really? <laughs> Come on, Mark. Why you do this to me? Zucks. So, um, yeah, that's why I started blogging because, and <laughs> that was actually a tagline for my blog, you know, because I can't Facebook. So I started the blog because I couldn't get on Facebook because of the email thing, because this was before they went public. So I used that to keep in touch with, uh, with him and, you know, his friends later became my friends. And then I found a whole community of uh, different people and stuff like that. And then when YouTube came around, um, I got an account uh, May 1st of 2006. So I recently celebrated my 10-year uh, anniversary. Uh, that's pretty cool. But I originally signed up for YouTube so that way I could uh, take advantage of the subscriber function. So that way I could, you know, subscribe to all my favorite YouTube, you know, video makers, YouTubers, before they were all labeled content creators. And uh, so I could get uh, emails in, you know, my Gmail, Hotmail back in the day. Uh, letting me know when new videos would come out. So that way I could go over there and be like, ah, new video, cool. <laughs> so I signed, I signed up for uh, YouTube for that reason as well as to leave comments and stuff like that. So like way back in the day, I was really big into commenting on other people's YouTube videos, and I still do it, I mean, obviously, you know, because, you know, A, it's a good way to get your channel out there, and B, um, I always like leaving comments on uh, people's videos that I like and stuff like that, and I think it's just kind of cool to be part of the, the community, you know, one of us. <laughs> so I started it to do all that, and then I was, as I was watching all these people kind of come up into, you know, being regulars on YouTube, um, I wanted to do it too. But at the time, I didn't have uh, any cameras or anything like that. And keep in mind, this was before cameras were on every phone, you know, and the cameras that were on phones weren't very good, you know, even by, by the standards back then. So back then, you had to get, like, an actual camera camera. So, you know, I was kind of shit out of luck, pretty much. And uh, I borrowed my friend's camera to record a couple things while I was still in college. Um, did a little bit of recording random things every once in a while, but it was very erratic. It was just kind of like a whenever we get around to it sort of thing. But in September of 2008, that's when I decided to make the plunge, or take the plunge, rather, and uh, purchase my own a uh, little camera. It was a little Sanyo Zacti uh, CG6, so it was like the little pistol grip cameras that were really popular back in the day because you had the uh, the flip cameras, which had the little USB dongle that came out and it had the screen on the back you couldn't flip around and see. So I got the Sanyo Zacti because you could you know, flip the screen around so you could actually kind of see what you were doing. But uh, the, the lens wasn't wide angle, so if I held it like about this far, it looked like I was like way up in your face, and like my whole face took up the uh, took up the video. But I only held it out this far because if I extended my arm for like a long period of time, even though the camera's not very heavy, um, after a while, like my arm started shaking because like I try to hold it still, and if I'm walking, you know, it's just like ah, <laughs> you know, I got a lift. I'm 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 not one of the strong ones. But, uh, yeah, so a lot of those early videos were a little eh, but uh, the reason I'm uploading them is to, you know, show my progression as a YouTuber, video maker, content creator, yeah, <laughs> and stuff like that. And uh, don't worry, later on, uh, fairly soon, we're going to be getting to the HD videos, which are a lot nicer in quality, so you're going to be seeing that very soon with the re-uploads. But, uh, yeah, man, so... Once I got my own camera and stuff like that, started making videos a bit more regularly. Um, it wasn't like a, a daily or a weekly thing. 
but uh, I made them a lot more often than I did before, and I really got into it. And you know, the more I got into YouTube, uh, the less I did on my blog. You know, as far as written posts and stuff like that. So over time, and uh, it was especially uh, hard to do while I was in the Navy because, you know, you only had so much free time that you could work on stuff like that. And uh, the free time that I did have, I was dedicated mostly to making videos or putting videos together, you know, stuff like that. And I remember, you know, even when I was on the, uh, the USS Kurtz, you know, just putting videos together, you know, in one of the spaces. Because you know, I had like my little uh, computer and stuff like that, and I would take the files and just had Sony Vegas, and I was just sitting there, you know, with the headphones on, just okay, this part, this part, you know. So yeah, <laughs> couldn't really do that on Lassen because they were a bit more strict about it, and uh, we were doing a lot of operational stuff when we were underway on Lassen, but uh, on Kurtz it was a lot more relaxed, so I I was able to do that and uh, stuff like that, but. Um, the main point of this is that, you know, the more I did YouTube, the less I did, you know, actual text blogging to the point where I kind of stopped it altogether and just did YouTube. And so I decided, you know, what, what if I, uh, just incorporated my videos into my blog, you know, and just kind of made it like a mishmash of both of the things. And so it kind of became that. And then after a while, I, you know, tried keeping it uploaded or updated rather and you know there's just times where I couldn't get to like a proper computer you know I'd have to do it on mobile so I'm like ah, I can't really sit down to you know put it all together for a blog post so I'll just put it up on YouTube anyway so yeah that was kind of a, a sad thing but uh, basically um, now that I have a little more time than I did when I was in the Navy um, still I still got things to do, you know, I got class to get to and work and all that kind of stuff, but uh, I want to get around to revamping the blog, uh, get the blog updated for videos and stuff like that. Um, the idea is to uh, just kind of keep it updated for, uh, you know, from where I left off, basically. Um, eventually, I want to get to um, just kind of... <clears throat> like uh, redoing the URLs for the YouTube videos. So that way it's uh, to the re-uploads versus the old videos, which have all been unlisted. So the videos will still work, but they're going to be on my old channel. So like if you wanted to you know, like go and watch it on the YouTube page and leave me a comment there, it would direct you to the old channel. So I think, you know, you know, I guess to give my re-uploads a chance to get some views and stuff like that, you know, it's best to, you know, change over the links and stuff like that. It's the same video, but uh, it's just on my new channel, so <laughs> there you go. Uh, as far as, like, the future goes, um, I want to do more blog posts versus video posts, at least for a little bit, just so that way I can kind of get back into the right mindset. I can, you know, dust off my you know, writing chops and uh, stuff like that. But uh, it's not going to be a regularly scheduled thing, you know, because I feel that if I stick to uh, that kind of schedule, um, I'm going to get, you know, I'm going to panic a little bit too much because, you know, I got to scramble to put something together, you know, just so that way I can meet the deadline. And, you know, at first it was kind of cool to do that, but after a while it just kind of uh, ended up deadening my creativity because I had to put something out there and, you know, I had to do it like really quick. So <laughs> didn't have a whole lot of time to think about stuff. So uh, the blog posts and stuff like that are, you know, they're not going to be a, a frequently scheduled thing. But uh, I do want to make it happen and uh, maybe tailor up the blog a little bit. I'm not sure. You know, because I do like the look of it, but, uh, you know, we'll look into some things, stuff like that. But first and foremost, we got to get it updated. That's the big thing. So, I think I've covered all the bases here, and we're, we just passed the 40-minute uh, the mark on the raw recording. So, this is going to be a, a bit of a long one, but I uh, hope you guys 
kind of understand, you know, what's been going on with me lately, why I've been acting a little weird and stuff like that. And I hope you guys understand, you know, why I'm doing the things I'm doing to hopefully get back into a better place and to, you know, make better videos, blog posts, just make better stuff in the long run. So, with that said, this is the Andy Son. Sign up for now. Thinking you guys, Pook, for tuning in to this long ass video <laughs> of me talking to my webcam. And uh, for watching my other stuff, reading my other stuff on my blog. And I uh, also want to thank you guys for liking with the thumbs, commenting, subscribing, send a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. <laughs> Catch you later, guys. Bye.